Hello, panel of judges. My name is Basi Ibatu Sama. I'm an undergraduate student of the Department of Geology at Kwame Sama University. I'm here to give a presentation on the best evaluation of XYZ field, where we are 5,000, Southeast Nigeria. These are my team members, a faculty advisor, and an industry based mentor. These are the apps I'm for our presentation to run from the introduction down to summary, conclusion, and recommendations. Introduction. The aim of this research is to integrate 3D sensing data with the available well of data from the XYZ field in order to carry out the business assessment to determine potential needs and prospects of the OML 5000 surveys that do. This is the workflow we adopted for carrying out the business assessment projects. Our study area is located at about 4 degrees north to 6 degrees north of the latitude and 3 degrees east to 9 degrees east of the longitude. It's about 15 kilometers from the shoreline and about 10 meters of average water depth. The site the location is located at the site is portion of the person, and the field history began with the acquisition of 3D sensor data in 1994. The data was processed in 1996, and drilling campaign began in 2002. The regional geology. The regional geology will be broken down under the tonic evolution. With the tonic evolution, the data that has begun with the rifting of the South American continent from the African continent, followed by regional subsidence and an influx of sediments from the continent. This is the equation of the metal surface in Africa. Stratigraphic evolution. Stratigraphic evolution of the metal surface will be divided under three main headings, which is the deposition of the Akata formation, the Akata formation, and the Benin formation. And the basin evolution began in the Paleocene with the deposition of Akata shells, which are deposits of deep marine fishes, closely followed by the subsidence and the deposition of clastics, accompanied with the finds, which is the Akata formation. After that, the Akata formation, Continuous deposition of sand packages occurred, which is a Biafra member being a reservoir rock. After the deposition of the Biafra member, an unconformity is cut across part of the southeast of the Delta Basin, which was closely followed by shell depression. After shell depression, continuous deposition occurred, separating the Biafra member with a quarry member, with being a CO rock. The quarry member is separated from the Biafra member by an unconformity. And after the quarry member, the beneath formation was deposited, being Concentrated that was ranging from place to scene to recent image. This is a data photographic framework of, of the natural data basin adopted from Richard's paper in 1997. This, this photographic framework shows the, the six depots of the natural data basin and also shows the three major formations of the natural data basin. This is the plate concept map of the natural data basin, showing the different contributing plate elements, which includes our shell rock being our source rock and our reservoir rock being the we have first and solid and other formation, and also capped by a seal rock being the quarry member. The, the plane map also shows us um, the faults that pass through the field, acting as entrapments for hydrocarbon. Okay, that's it. We are provided with a vast amount of data set, ranging from 3D seismic data to well log data, visual data, observation data, texture data, and core photographs. We integrated all these provided, provided data set in order to carry out a fault interpretation with synthetic steps in seismic time. Log correlation and stratigraphy pressure plots, which we arrive at the time being now, which we discuss on our way, which we mention analysis and our due recommendation. The tablet for seismic. The seismic data that was provided was about 369 square kilometers in total area covered, and the time range ranged from 0 milliseconds to 5,000 milliseconds. And this is the image of our world displayed on our seismic data, and this is the image showing our seismic data at time, the time slice of. 1,600 milliseconds, and also showing where our wells are clustered. Here is a 3D image showing our, our seismic data. The database, the database for the seismic was quality assessed and quality check in order to find out inconsistencies in the data. And after applying that a realization, we were able to enhance the seismic data to allow easy navigation to the seismic data. The seismic quality was very good, and, and we were also able to discovered that we are A1 and we are A2X we located after the seismic coverage in which we could not integrate the two wells into our, our building integration. This is the database divided for the wells. We were given 17 wells and 15 wells had division data and 11 wells only became a pressure data. Core photographs were provided for only one well being well A3XZ and this did not allow us to integrate this is, this is a, a, a diagram showing the amount of words that we're giving, showing the words that we adequate for carrying out these assessments. We also create QC. 
the kind of quality assessment and quality check on our available well data, and we were able to find out that your well, A3A exit has no methodology law, meaning that you could not release the core photograph that we came in to carry out any valuable interpretation. And we also found that 10 out of 11 models had no methodology logs to relate the visual data to the free data and to carry out free discrimination. Only well, A3, only well, A8 exit was useful for carrying out free discrimination. And our two-way travel time appeared to be very shallow and close to the surface, so we needed to carry out the synthetic testing now in order to be able to carry out the basic assessment. After carrying out the synthetic testing now, we were able to apply two major methods, which is the bulk sheet method and the situation and speed method in order to do the synthetic testing now. This is a diagram showing us a plot which we carry out between our, our depth and our two-way travel time. We use a second order polynomial function in order to carry out this plot. Seismic interpretation. After planning through our seismic data, we were able to realize that most parts of our area of study contained shared diapers, which was in conformity with the original geology of the study area. And we also we were also able to identify the, the area of the, of the seismic data in which most of our wells were clustered in. That is the south eastern portion of our seismic data. We identified shared diapers as low velocity creating to three layers of the seismic. This is the data mechanisms for structure and direct hydrocarbon indicators. After planning through our assessment, we were also able to discover that our well B1 was due in a gravel structure and well A1 down to A8 were due in a host structure in the study area. Fault interpretation. We carried out the fault interpretation on this available seismic data, and this is what we arrived at in our fault data. And this, this image here shows the time slice showing us our area of concentration or our area of interest where most of our wells are clustered. This is also showing us most of the faulty struggle across the field. This is the generalized time framework. This is the generalized cost framework which we carry out in the area of 5000. And this here shows the area of interest and the normal faults banding our area of interest in which all our wells are clustered. This is a zoom image of our area of interest. These are most of our wells that are clustered. And you can see that the normal fault is banding our area of, banding our area of interest with other smaller faults traveling away from it. I'm not quite about to in my now. We're talking on the level of analysis and the petrophysics. There is a map correlation. A strike line of correlation of the wells that had adequate gamma ray and resistivity logs were taken from west to east along our along our wells, starting from the B1 down to the A1. The reason why the positional environment, the reason why Stanscore was deposited in a high energy deltaic environment and was being underlain by a thick shell in the Akata formation, of which we were able to delineate our, our contacts and our reservoirs. The Biafra sands, we are able to delineate our, our reservoir P0.5 and P1 on our log, which we tied to our sequence, to our stratigraphy. The quiet boy interval. The quiet boy interval is Paleocene in age, and we are able to delineate it on our log, which we tied to our sequence or to our stratigraphy framework. Sequence stratigraphy correlation. The positional sequence model was used, of which we had two sequences. The, the first sequence we had our reservoir ABC, P0.5 and P1 in our first sequence. Then in the second sequence we had our Quaibo member and our Bini formation. The two sequences were being separated by an emotional unconformity, which truncated eventually. The P1, P1 reservoir and the P0.5 reservoir are located in the low stand, as they were deposited in the low stand system charts. And they are being separated from the ABC reservoir by transgressive system charts. The ABC reservoir are not widespread across the wells. They are often truncated. They are being truncated by the anerosive unconformity which happens to be the Quaibo channel. And the Quaibo channel is our regional seal. This is the pressure data we got for the wells, the wells available that have pressure details. 
Mate read is well A8X, which had an adequate gamma ray log and density log we could tie to the pressure data in order to identify our reservoir P0.5 and P1 and also to get our fluid discrimination. The fluid discrimination done for well 8, 8x, we, we did two methods, which is the plotting our pressure against our depth, of which at the intersection we got our gas oil water, water contact, gas oil contact at 3360 feet. And we also used our density and neutron logs to know the gas, gas oil contact, of which we got it at the same depth, at the same depth. The fluid discrimination for well A8X for our reservoir P1, we had the same plot, we plotted our pressure against our depth, of which we got a, an, a contact, which happened to be our, our oil water contact. On our log, we also located it at the same point of which it fit in. We, we had a reduction in our neutron, neutron log and a reduction in our density log, which pointed to the fact that that particular place was our oil water contact. And we got it at the depth 3649 feet. The petrophysical analysis. This, this was a method carried out for the petrol physical analysis in order, in order to get our porosity, our water saturation, our net gross. And what was observed from this result was we had a high net gross for our new one, and we had a porosity of about 30% and the net gross was quite high. And we also saw in, in well A8 that the net gross, the porosity and the and the water saturation were quite low. Coming to our reservoir P1, we also noticed that our well B1 had water saturation at 0 0.7, which is quite high, and a net gross, which is quite high. We also noticed our well A8 that it had this, the water saturation at 0 0.14, which is quite lower than the others. The pay thickness, the pay thickness was gotten across the well, starting from B1 down to A1 for the gas and also for the oil. Of which you notice that the B1 had a high oil pay thickness and the, the A1 had only gas. Then we, we notice in our breeze about P1 that our B1 had only oil without gas and the and our reservoir A and our well A8X had only oil without gas. The stratigraphy interpretation. On our sites, we were able to get a, a section running from A to A prime, of which we marked our unconformity, which is the angular unconformity. That is the quibo angular unconformity. We also marked an unlapped surface and also a maximum flooding surface. We marked the TS, which is the transgressive surface, on our seismic. The quibo unconformity surface. A section line was taken from A to A prime on our seismic, which we marked our MFS, our S, SB, which is the sequence boundary. And this is the, the sequence boundary surface on our map running from A to A prime. Then we also took a section line B to B prime, of which we marked our up deep area. And we noticed that in our up deep area, our wells were drilled in that area. And which pointed to the fact, to the, which pointed to it being a prospective area. We also marked our erosional surface, which happens to be this particular area on the map, on the seismic, and this area on the map. At this point, I would like to hand over to my colleague. Thank you. My name is Ekefre Ayani Mendez, and I will be presenting on the horizon interpretation and prospect identification. This is our map horizon, this is the horizon for P0.5 and P1, map on every 10 10 milliseconds on our seismic session. This is our time map generated from the map horizon, and this is our P0.5 reservoir 
and be one of the world. We, our four polygons on this planet, we have a, our major fault, which is our boundary from our area of interest, trending from the northeast to the southwest direction. And we also have another fault trending from northwest to southeast direction. On our seismic session, we were able to identify a back to back fault. We have one fault here dipping in the north to the north direction, and we have another fault here dipping to the south direction. And this is our hostile area, which most of our wells are hostile. On our map, on our time map, we are able to identify the hostile area, which happens to be this area. And our wells pass through three different structures, which is the D1 structure the a 5 structure and this hostile structure. This is our prospect in which we identify we have good fault closure on it. This is our depth map generated from our time map. And on our depth map, we are able to identify our B1 structure for the B0.5 reservoir and our a 5 structure. This is our gas structure and this is our oil structure. And this is the prospect which we identify in the area. This is our depth map for the B1 reservoir and this is our A5X structure, our B1 structure and our identified prospect on it. Our amplitude extraction which also says that the direct hydrocarbon indicator was mapped and this is our B1 structure and our A5X structure and on the B1 structure the amplitude conforms to the structure, which indicates that there is presence of hydrocarbon in that area. And in our P1 structure, we are also able to identify a conformable amplitude to our structure, which there is no well that was drilled at that area, and we identify that as a potential prospect in the field. Risk assessment. From our identified prospect, we are able to calculate the risk of drilling through the prospect and we give a place of sale, we give a place of sale of 0.6. Volumetric estimation. This is the methodology in which we use to calculate our volumes and this is the method in which we use to get our depth and area. We plotted the depth against the area to get our gross rock volume. This is our volumetric estimation for reservoir P0.5. And we were in the B1 structure, we were able to identify 528 million cubic feet of gas and we were able to identify 1.2 million barrels of oil. And in the A5X structure for the P0.5 gas, we were able to identify 700.8 cubic feet of gas, million cubic feet feet of gas and the FFX oil, stru oil structure we are able to identify 1.3 million barrels of oil. This is our volumetric estimation for reservoir P1 and in the P1 structure, the, the P1 structure did not find gas, it's the only oil that was there and the oil volume was about one was about 1.1 million barrels and the FFX P1 structure was able to identify 800 million barrels of oil and 1.4 million cubic feet of gas. Summary so of conclusion and recommendation. On our conclusion, we were able to identify the hydrocarbon to be gas and oil, and we identified one play in the study area, which occurs in the upper Miocene, which is our Biafra sand. The trap styles include four closures and stratigraphic straps, which are unconformity, the quite unconformity, and the shell diaper. And we were able to identify eight prospects, which all of them occur in the upper Miocene, Biafra member, sands, and all key petroleum systems were available for our prospect. The local structure for our prospect was mainly false closure. And our recommendation. For the eight prospects we identify, we recommend that adequate wireline locks be provided for the 10 wells that do not have adequate locks so that we can integrate it into the evaluation. And if this is done, it will give us a tie to the information in the core photos 
for the reason why we interest. And it also expands the well database of, to further assess in the presence of hydrocarbon in the prospect. Acknowledgement. We would like to thank NAPI for the opportunity they are given to us to explore our capacity through this competition. I would like to thank ExxonMobil and Slum Beijing for giving us our workstations and the software which we use in this analysis. To our head of department and staff of geology, we say a very big thank you. And to our industry based mentor, Mr. Ulumide Udumade, we appreciate you, sir. Thank you.